The number one question I get um, being a pastor is, is this, um, what is it like? What is it like being a pastor? I, I love it, to be honest. I love it. There's nothing else I would love to do. It's, it's really tough. Um, as a youth pastor, sleepovers are getting really, really hard. Uh, lock-ins at church are getting really, really difficult. But it's a very humbling experience. But I really believe this is something that God uh, wants me to do. The second question I always get is, as a pastor, is how is it being a pastor at Bethel Korean Church? And I'm going to um, answer this question very carefully because uh, my senior pastor is right here, right? So I'm going to be very careful, but um, it's good. I, I love it. Um, there's some, to be honest, some very intense mothers and fathers out there, but um, I truly love it. I get a lot of support from deacons and elders and parents and students, and um, I love the people I work with. But something that really stresses me out being part of the Bethel pastoral staff is this email I get once a month, and um, you'll see it on the screen in Korean, and it's titled, um, Pastor's Lunch Duty. So students, I get this email once a month, and um, as a pastor here, we have to rotate and do um, pastor lunch. And this is very, very stressful for me. Uh, when I see this list, students, the first thing that I do is I don't look for my name, but I look for, obviously, uh, our senior pastor's name. When is he, when is Samonim doing lunch? I better go to that lunch, right? And then secondly, I look for my name. As I look in the list, I see my name, and it stresses me out. I went to seminary. Um, I could cook a little, but um, this is not my job, right, to cook for like 20 people or so. I think... I'll just order food, but then I'm like, oh, Korean pastors, they don't like a Chick-fil-A or Taco Bell. They're going to think I'm cheap, right? So what do pastors do when they're stressed out? You know, um, what we, most of us, what we do is we call our wives. So I call my wife, Yobo, I, I need help, right? I, I need help. And she tells me, you know what, Dan, don't worry, I got you. Um, I'll think of something. So when it's my turn, the next day she stays up late at night or wakes up early in the morning and she makes the food. I bring it to church, I serve it, and, and all of a sudden as I'm serving it, um, someone says something like, oh, Konsanim is a really good cook, which is my mother-in-law. <laughs> and then all of a sudden someone says, yeah, that's why this food is good, right? And then someone's like, yeah, that makes sense. And then all of a sudden it goes around like, oh, Konsani, my mother-in-law, made the food. But in my mind, I'm like, no, it was my beautiful wife, right? My beautiful wife cooked the food. You know, this is unfair. Why does everyone think my mother-in-law did it, right? And then I get home, and my wife asks me how to go, and I'm all angry and bitter. I'm like, all the pastors think your mom made it, right? That's not right, but I know that you worked hard, and you made it. And my wife, who is so wise, who I go to a lot for counsel, she looks at me, and she says this many times to me when I'm angry or bitter or I feel cheated. She goes, Dan, it's okay. Just let it go. Dan, just let it go. The reason I share this story with you today is because many of us, we feel sometimes that we got wronged. We got cheated. Um, it's unfair. Someone talks slander on you, and you're bitter, and we have an unforgiving heart. But the Bible tells us, and the message of Christ, is that we need to let it go. Amen? That's why in verse 31 today, in our passage, it says this. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Paul wrote this letter to the early Christians to help them with their walk with God. And here in this passage, Paul, he contrasts between the old sinful way of life and the new way of life we have in Jesus. In the ESV it says, let all these things be put away from you. Students, parents, we need to put away the things of our old sinful way, the old way we used to walk. That's why earlier Paul says in verse 22 of the same chapter, put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. When we get bitter, or when we're angry, or we feel cheated, or someone talks bad about us, we need to do the opposite. Because Christ, he forgave us. He forgave us by giving us grace. 
God's grace was given through his one and only son, Jesus Christ. This is the way we need to walk now. This new life that we have in Christ. That's why Paul says once again in verse 24, And put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Church, let me remind you this morning, students, we have wronged God. We turned our back to God. We treated him unfair. There's been times when we did not stand up for Christ and for God. There's been times when we even doubted God and we cursed God and we wronged him. But he let go of our sin. He let go of his one and only son to die on the cross for our sins. He showed us grace. Students, I never want you to forget that. It's always been and it was, it was always all about Jesus. It was always about Jesus. Going back to verse 32 as we close, Paul mentions a few specific things we need to do. It says, be kind, compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. We need to be kind and compassionate in the year 2016. One last illustration is um, we went to a retreat last week. And what I have in my hand right now is called um, encouragement boxes. Uh, we had over uh, 200 students and counselors. And thank you for your prayers. It was a blessing. Uh, but everyone got an encouragement box. And what this box was, it has everyone's name on it. And they also included me. I, I was so happy because usually, like, they always forget the pastor. But they even have my name. And what the kids do is, um, or the students do, is they write a letter to um, people at the camp. So some people, for three nights and four days, all they were doing was just writing letters. Because there's 200 of them, right? And um, I know students, I know you guys can be nice. Some of the parents are like, no, my son and daughter, they are not kind, they are not compassionate. But I know you can be kind and compassionate. And I want to just share just, just two. I think this is really encouraging. Dear Pastor Dan, thank you for just your presence here. Honestly, you feel like a dad to me, even though you're not that old. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's so important how you make us feel, and thank you for everything that you do. Student's name. Kind and compassionate. Last one. Peter, I just want to thank you for all the things you do for this ministry. Um, thank you for the teachers. Thank you for everything else. Um, you're always so caring and loving. I look up to you for that. Thank you for just everything. I will keep Abby, your daughter, away from boys. Thank you for that. <laughs> I appreciate that. So I had lots of encouraging, kind, and compassionate Letters from the students. And here in our passage today, it says that we need to walk in our new way of life. And I know, students, that you could do it. Parents, in the year 2016, we need to be kind and compassionate to our coworkers, to our husbands, to our wives, and to our relatives. And lastly, we need to forgive someone who did you wrong. Young people, I know some of you have a lot of anger towards your dad or anger towards your mom, you need to forgive them because Christ forgave us. Parents, you need to forgive each other because Christ forgave you. So in the year 2016, let us fix our eyes on Jesus by letting go and giving grace towards others. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus by letting go of our old sinful way and walking in our new life with Jesus. Let's pray together.